Does the Blessed Virgin Mary's queenship have biblical basis? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. A little girl returned home from her first day at school. Did you learn anything? Her mother asked. The little girl replied, Not enough, I guess. I have to go back tomorrow. Today is the memorial of the queenship of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Our mother Mary, like all mothers, inspires us to live lives of faith so that we can bring Christ to all as she brought him to us. Her surrender to God's purpose for humanity is also a surrender for us to God's purpose beyond our own goals, many of which may become an obstacle for his grace to consume us. Mary's title as Queen of Heaven and Earth is a great scandal to many non-Catholic Christians. After all, the Bible doesn't mention anything about her being a queen in God's kingdom. All this royal attention Catholics give to Mary, whether it's singing Hail Holy Queen enthroned above, or portraying Mary in statues and paintings with a crown on her head, seems to many non-Catholics to detract from the royalty of Christ, who alone is King of Kings. Besides, how could Mary be a queen, since she is not the wife of Jesus but only his mother? One biblical theme sheds light on these questions and serves as a key for unlocking the mystery of Mary's queenship the Old Testament tradition of the Queen Mother in the Davidic Kingdom. In the monarchy of King David, as well as in other ancient kingdoms of the Near East, the mother of the ruling king held an important office in the royal court and played a key part in the process of dynastic succession. In fact, the king's mother ruled as queen, not his wife. The great preeminence of the king's mother may seem odd from our modern Western perspective, in which we think of a queen as being the wife of a king, However, recall that most ancient Near Eastern kings practiced polygamy. King Solomon had 700 wives. Imagine the chaos in the royal court if all 700 were awarded the queenship. But since each king had only one mother, one can see the practical wisdom in bestowing the queenship upon her. A number of Old Testament passages reflect the important role of the queen mother in the Davidic kingdom. Probably the clearest example of the Queen Mother's role is that of Bathsheba, wife of David and mother of Solomon. Scholars have noted the excellence of Bathsheba's position in the kingdom once she became Queen Mother during Solomon's rule. With this Old Testament background, we can now more clearly see how the New Testament portrays Mary in light of the Queen Mother tradition. The Gospel of Matthew has often been called the Gospel of the Kingdom. Matthew emphasizes that Jesus is the son of David, who is the true king of the Jews, establishing the kingdom of heaven. With all this kingly imagery, it should not be surprising to find queen mother themes as well. Right away, Matthew shows explicitly how the infant Jesus is the Emmanuel child as prophesied in Isaiah 7.14. As we saw above, this prophecy links the royal messianic child with his queen mother. Further, Matthew singles out the intimate relationship between the mother and her royal son by using the phrase, the child and his mother, five times in the first two chapters, recalling the close association between queen mother and royal son as described in the Book of Kings. We find Mary portrayed against the background of Davidic kingdom motifs in Luke's Gospel as well, especially in his accounts of the Annunciation and Visitation. First, the angel Gabriel is said to appear to a virgin betrothed to a man of the house of David. Then the angel tells Mary, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary's royal office is made even more explicit in Luke's account of the visitation. Elizabeth greets Mary the title, the mother of my Lord. This title is charged with great queenly significance. In the royal court language of the ancient Near East, the title mother of my Lord was used to address the queen mother of the reigning king, who himself was addressed as my Lord. Thus, with this title, Elizabeth is recognizing the great dignity of Mary's role as the royal mother of the King Jesus. Finally, Mary's queenship can be seen in the great vision described in Revelation 12. And a great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child, and she cried out in her pangs of birth, in anguish for delivery. Who is this newborn child? 
he is described as the messianic king exercising his dominion. In verse 5, the author of Revelation chose the Messianic Psalm 2 to describe how this child will rule all the nations with a rod of iron. This royal son is taken up to heaven to sit on a throne, and he ushers in the kingdom of God by defeating the devil. Now the kingdom of our God has come, for the accuser has been thrown down. Certainly, this newborn child is the royal Messiah, King Jesus. Hopefully, as we try to learn and understand more her role in the kingdom of God, we too may be convinced of the primacy of our Blessed Virgin Mary in our own existence. Our own mothers remind us constantly of our Queen Mother's significance in our lives, and for this alone, we must give our utmost respect, reverence, and love. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.